Lord, may the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing and acceptable to you. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. A little earlier today, we were outside blessing animals. I won because I got to bless a guinea pig. That's pretty awesome. Uh, and, you know, there were, I was really hoping for some spiders, for some venomous two-headed snakes, because Father Ray was really like, look, let me lay hands on those things, and I will bless them. But, you know, sometimes you don't get all of your wishes in life. Well, let me say something else you don't get all the time. You don't get to preach where all three, thank you, by the way, thank you very much for giving me this Sunday, where all three of the lessons are about divorce and marriage. That's, woo, uh, you know? Don't we all love to hear this one? So get ready. Um, let me say a quote to you first from St. Francis. He said this, He considered himself no friend of Christ if he did not cherish those for whom Christ died. The, the thing that we need to remember when we read these lessons today, I know that some people might read these and go, this is wonderful, I absolutely love this. Some might read this lesson and go, this seems awfully patriarchal. Well, um, it might come across that way. But actually, when we look at what's going on in the Scriptures, what we see here today is that God chose to create. And He created everything, right? He created the little squirmy things that I'm not really a big fan of. He created flies that for some reason are just in our house. I don't know why. There are, He created cattle. And He created fainting goats. That was a good one. He creates all of these things, right? And He gives them all partners. And they go forth and they multiply. And then He creates Adam. Creates man. He creates them. And yet, what we see in Genesis 1 is we hear the story of creation in Genesis 1 and He creates the male and female. And He says that they are very good. Everything else is good, but we are very good. What happens in Genesis 2 is we get a re-looking at exactly what took place in that time period. How did humanity come about? Well, what we find out is that man was alone. He was lonely. So, Right from the get-go, the, the place of manhood in the Bible is a place of loneliness, a place of isolation. Sure, he might be able to rule all of that, but he's, he has nothing. He has nothing to love these things with. And so God puts him to sleep, and the great physician gets to work. He takes out a rib, he breathes on it, does what he does. I don't know how that works. Um, and he creates Eve, creates woman. And then the line at the bottom of Genesis, if you look at your bulletin, says this, Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. Don't you find that interesting? The writers of the Scriptures, upon giving you this great example of how God created Mankind, womankind, humanity, right? He immediately says this. Man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife. I was told this growing up. My, my dad would say to me, um, and I heard, the, and, and my, my wife reminds me of this, um, men fall in love very easily. I mean, men, men have an ability to just fall in love. Women are much more thoughtful about love, I think, than men are. Men are like, ooh, she likes me. I'm in love, you know. She looked at me. That's it. It's over. Um, but, but women are, are much more like, whoa, um, job buddy, you know. Um, is this going to make our children going to look ugly, you know. I mean, they're, they're thinking things through, you know. Men are like, um, she looked at me. Oh, this is awesome. Praise the Lord. But a man leaves his father and, and his mother, and he clings to his wife. To cling. Who are we to cling to ultimately? The Scripture makes it abundantly clear 
that the person ultimately we are all to cling to is Jesus. We're to cling to the cross. We're to the cling to the place by which mercies are given. New life is established. Blessings come forth. It's in the place of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. Because what we find in the New Testament in Mark, we find this whole dilemma about, well, what do you think about divorce Jesus? Jesus is, is perplexed because we know that in the beginning, divorce should never take place. For those of us who have gone through divorce, we know how painful it is. But we know that the other side is redemption and reconciliation. Isn't that the work of Jesus? To reconcile? To make one out of many? Man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife, and the two shall become one. Have you ever met those like old married couples, by the way, that are like been married for like 75 years, and they like look the same? You know what I'm saying? You've seen this, right? I mean, like, like you're like, wow. Not only can they finish each other's sentences, and they can kind of think what the other's thinking, but they literally have grown so together over so many formative years that they kind of look similar. Who are we supposed to look similar to? We're supposed to look like Jesus when people look at us. See, marriage is that mystical union that kind of reminds us of what it's like to think about the Trinity. Huh? How are two people supposed to become one? I mean, we get the physical bit, but like, how are we supposed to spiritually become one? How does that work? Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. How does that work? Jesus reminds us so much. But see, there's another side of the story. This is Genesis 2, and Genesis 3 follows. Everything kind of goes bad. The fall happens. Sin enters in, and what happens? Divorce. What happens? Disunity. What happens? The breakdown of the family. And The old Adam brings sin. Romans says the new Adam in Christ brings what? New life. Brings salvation. So for those of us who are married, for those of you who are thinking about marriage, for those of you who are like, look, I've been married and that was was horrible. Um, Know this. There is forgiveness. There is reconciliating love. There is a glorious redemption for us in our faith in Christ. Because it's in Him that we are all brought together and made one in Him. We are reconciled through Jesus. We are made new in Him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.